So, um, we're working on Christmas presents here in the shop and um, doing some work. I just decided to do some work with a coffin plane and I wanted to show the viability of it. It seems to be a little bit of a mystery at how much they can actually do and can they, you know, they're called smoothers and if they can actually smooth this is um, New York Tool Company number three. I'll show up better in a, here in a second. But um, just want to show what they can do and the process here of just uh, jointing and chewing up a couple of small pieces of wood for a project and um, figured I'd video it. So let's get at it. I'll show you a little bit of what's going on here. See how the lighting is. The lighting looks okay without the big light on. So, so I am just chewing up these two pieces of wood, making them the same width and square um, from the sides and bottom to the top. Uh, they've been cut once upon a time. They're not very square. I'll show you how far out they are. So if I just take the side here. They're high in the middle. Um, the middle needs to come down. See if I can show you that right there. I'm going to take the middle out, square them to this side, this face, so that both of them be the same. I'll do them at the same time here. It's them both clamped in the ends of the vise here. And I didn't put any extra blocks in here. You should put blocks in here that are kind of this width so that keep the vise from racking, but I didn't. I will then, uh, when I get close to the end here, I'll just check the thickness and make them the same thickness really quick. Um, but I wanted to show the process and um, do it with this really cool old, it's late 1800s. Um, get the light right there. New York Tool Company number three. It does not, it has a, a replacement uh, wedge from once upon a time. It's not a great wedge, but it works awesome. And uh, at some point, I will make another wedge for that. Like I have some of my other woodies up there. As you can see I've made replacement wedges for some of them. And um, I'm going to do this all with the coffin plane just because I felt like grabbing it. I mean, I could have just grabbed the number four off the shelf and done this in two seconds. But I think it would be more fun this way, so that's what I'm going to do. So first, um, I think I'm going to... For everybody who's going to want to see shavings really quick, you just get the so that's what's going on. Anybody's going to want to see shavings really quick, I'll make some shavings really fast. Just to show you, because I have it set right now, and then maybe I'll just take it apart and show you the components and what's important. Uh, the... Irons in these, the tapered irons in these are far, far superior to everything that really is on the market. And this is set up for a pretty heavy cut. And just so that you know, I'm just taking stuff out of the middle right now. This is a lip. See you look. This is a lip right here. Let me flip the light on, see if it's better. It kind of washes it out. Let's leave it off. Um, there's a lip right here, so this lip needs to come down to this height anyway. So I'm going to take the lip off first. And I'm also going to concentrate on the end closest to um, the camera here because this end is thicker. So right now, and I'm, I'm also I'm playing it back into the grain just to prove it to you. If you look on the side, you see the... The grain's running up. So I am planting back into the grain right now, too. Um, if you'll notice, I'm not getting any tear out. Which is, this is as smooth as a piece of glass right now, just what I just hit. Because most of the time that I do use this, um, I am doing smoothing with it. It's really the only time I... We'll pull it out. I'm going to move you into a different view really quick because this is going, unfortunately, 
or fortunately, pretty quickly. And uh, I could just grab a jack and do this really fast, but I'm gonna give you a different view so you can kind of see the whole thing here. My wife made this cool little cart. It's got a bunch of dog holes in it, and if I can get one of them out of the way here, There's multiple lights in here and shit. Sorry for this. Let's get you up. Yeah, that's a good view there. That's a good view. So um, you can see all the, the wrapping presence table in the background. Get you a little higher, maybe this way. Let's see if you stay there. So this kind of this little extendable tripod thing sits in the dog holes as long as they have the bottom on them. So, um, yeah, the irons are far superior to anything that comes in a production plane. Um, I don't know if you, how good this is going to show up. This is the old, this is late 1800s. This is the original iron. Uh, this one does have a micro bevel on it because I had so much issue in getting this iron um, usable in the beginning because it was so old and rusted and I don't know let me see how much camber's on this probably not the best view nope, that's not definitely not the best view so there is some camber on it I do prefer to work with camber especially on a smoother Uh, so I'm going to give it a check, see what I need to concentrate on. Like I said, I know it's thicker down there, so it needs to come down. And I'm kind of close here. Center needs to come out of this a little bit. So I'm just going to keep whacking along here. This side needs to come down a lot. Plain geeks would love that sound. Get pretty square there on the front board, but the back board's this is um I don't know how well the light's gonna pick this up, but I'll try to get a close-up of it in a minute. This is as like I said, as smooth as a piece of glass right now. It's amazing what these old planes will do. And how long the irons will stay sharp versus newer irons. I did some work um, smoothing uh, some big um, live oak. Just checking the depth on the. Okay, it's a little bit light on this side. Um, from the USS Constitution with this plane, actually. Ooh, shit, that retracted a lot. Actually, works really good. Just barely picking up a shaving on both sides right now. I like to work out of a uh, square as much as I can. I 
I like to keep the iron square and do my work myself rather than skewing the iron to get the result that I want. Set a little bit lighter than it was in the beginning right now. Really, really close. You also, um, if you've watched Japanese planing, you can uh, you can draw these planes too, which is a nice feature. To, you're not used to keeping your, if you don't have um, good mechanics when you're planing, drawing along makes can make it easier. Really, really close right now. Almost close enough for good for this project. Please, please don't go to that right there. So let's check the thickness here real quick. And we'll play with the thickness. It only has to be close for this Christmas present. I'm doing some uh, angle joinery on it. It's just under inch, inch and seven sixteenths here. Better glasses. When I'm done here, I'll take this plane apart and show you the components. So 32nd under, it's just 32nd over inch and 3 8 32nd under inch and 7 16 It's 364 sticker on the other end right now. Yep, 364 sticker on the other end. And let's, I'll just check the middle without putting a straight edge on it. Yep, exactly. So it's it's pretty flat this way. Um, there's not really any belly in it without putting a straight edge on it. Um, these are going to be for outside anyway. So I'm just going to quickly rip off. Go heavy on the other end. Check my square real quick to see if there's anything I gotta deal with. And it's really square. So I'm just gonna take a few passes down here, work our way back. It's kind of a little dip over here anyway, so it'll be good. It'll clean up the whole top. very important about stock removal is that you only remove stock from the high points. Okay, I took the metal off. I'm just going to take some pass along this edge here. So 
if you do have a low point, stay away from the low points. Okay. Perfect. So I'll show you this. Show you this in the camera real quick. So that is a thirty second under inch and seven sixteenths. quick this can happen of course without using a straight edge as long as you pull in the full shavings I'm not gonna I'm not looking at the side here hopefully you can see that and it's a 30 second under might even might be just a couple of thousandths over that 30 second under inch and 7 16. So right now they're the same thickness. They're square, they're flat, they're smooth. And um, these are ready for joinery. So there's gonna be angled um, draw bore joinery on these, angled mortise and tenon on the ends um, for a frame that I'm going to do all by hand here. It's nice every now and then to work in small stock like this because it only take a few minutes. Um, I'm going to get you real close just to see. I want, you to show, I want to show the finish on it real quick. Hopefully this will pick this up. I don't know how. And like I said, you can see I was planing back into the grain this way see the grain coming up really heavy here and I don't know how well this is going to pick this up but I mean it is absolutely perfectly smooth if I had good light you'd be able to see you know reflection in this right now but let's take let's take this plane apart real quick get you back in one of my dog holes it doesn't go all the way through let's take this apart I'll show you some of the components of it Adjusting them is pretty simple as far as you know, tap method. So what we have here, here's the wedge. And this was a replacement wedge at some point in time. Now, if you can see from these shiny spots right here, it makes terrific contact for as really crude a wedge as this is. And they made it out of a piece of scrap wood. It actually had a little plug in it right here from something. Something they just grabbed around sitting in the shop. If you can see how shiny it is here, hopefully the camera's picking that up. It has great contact pattern um, on the uh, on the ears and in the middle. This wedge could be shaped um, to really work, but there's a lot of side play in this. It should be a little tighter. So you could make this into a better plane um, by making a better wedge. And I'm gonna show you what we have going on here, because this is a beautiful example of a, and you know, I got this for free, of a coffin plane, a, a coffin smoother. It's in terrific shape. I assume it's beach. It's definitely beach. If you look at the bottom here, it's definitely beach. It's got a very large mouth, but the um, great part of using these is that the double iron and if you set the iron it's interesting too normally this iron would be set very tight as far as the chip breaker cap iron to the edge and right now it's not very tight 
it's actually got quite a bit of stick out right there and that's um really a testament to how smooth it playing back into the grain there having that much of the iron sticking out you could set this much tighter make sure that you're not going to get any uh tear out but this iron if i remember right does have a back bevel on on it i needed to do that to flatten the surface And this is the original iron. I don't know. I don't even really cleaned it up a ton. Um, and it's got some rust on it right now, so you can't really see the name on it. But uh, it's laminated. It's a laminated iron. And I needed to back bevel the area in the front because of how bad this iron was. You can still see... There's some areas over here where it hasn't completely cleaned up. Um, but I did have to back bevel this to get it to where I could get the, the um, cap iron to make contact all the way across. And this, when, when I get an iron that's this out of shape, you, I think you can tell from the scratch pattern here that it's high in the middle and it's low on the sides. And somebody had tried to maybe use a belt sander or something at some point in time to flatten this out. When I get one that's this bad, I will let it get better over time. So every time I sharpen it, I'll take some more out of the middle, take some more out of the middle. But there is a slight back bevel on this. I uh, might be able to show you. So if I can get a good view, so the light's right. I can see it in my eyes, and I can't see it in the camera. So, I don't know if I can, maybe I'll help rocking it, but there's about, if you can see that gap in the angle there, there's about that much back bevel in. That's actually a good view if I could get it. That's where you can see it. There's that much back bevel in this iron. Yeah, it just looks crappy in the camera can't get the light right there's that much back bevel if you can see through there yeah you can see through there come on camera focus focus come on it's picking up something oh there we go all right so you can see oh we should stay focused would be great come on focus Come on, focus. Wait a second, is the camera lens over here? Where's the top? The top's over here. Uh, I'm not going to torture you with this, but you can see that it's there's that much back bevel in this iron. That's how much I needed to take off flattening in this area here to get it to where the cap iron sat flat, so it doesn't um, so it doesn't clog. Um, cap iron's obviously in fairly good shape. It's been honed flat. Um, it's a little bit sharp. It could be a little blunter for a smoother. If you look at the profile there, you could blunt this more for to act more like a chip breaker. It's a little bit sharp here for a smoother. You kind of want that. Um, you want this a little bit steeper here, so it should be rounded over a little more to break the chips better. You know, we get these nice big long wispy shavings, but when you're trying to plain figured wood, that's not what you want. Um, you don't want these. These are going to equal tear out, even though this did a terrific job not tearing out. Oh yeah, you can see I got a BB written on there for back bubble. You want, and if anybody's ever seen tests on these things, you want that chip to, um, and I'm going to set this one a little tighter this time. I can see there is camber on this too.
So this would be more stand, standard set for a smoother, if you can see that teeny little bit sticking out there. It's a little harder to push like that, but that is much safer for figured wood. Let's see, let's see if I get the light right. You can see that just a little teeny bit of Iron sticking past the cap iron chip breaker. I try to keep mine nice and even. But these, um, I saw an article <laughs> not too long ago saying that the thickness of irons doesn't make a difference in planing and chatter and everything else. I just think that's absolute um, garbage. It's nonsense. These massive thick irons definitely cut down on chatter. There's a lot of life left in this. I'll never use this iron up. Um, these are far superior to what we're using in our Bailey pattern planes. Much harder. They last, the edge lasts much longer. It's more much more like um, A1. It sharpens easier than A1, and its characteristics of staying sharper much more similar to A1. Uh, you can see when I first restored this, I spent a lot of time flattening the bevel, which makes, before I understood uh, sharpening, makes absolutely no differences, absolutely no reason to keep a pristine, shiny bevel like that. It's ridiculous. It has no function in cutting whatsoever. Um, uh, the steepness on this micro bevel here, as long as you keep that under 40 degrees or this entire bevel under 40 degrees, this makes no difference to the plane at all. It it's cuts based on its bedding angle of 45 degrees. So as long as the rear of this clears, which is all this is is a clearance angle, as long as the rear clears, um, this bevel angle makes no difference in the way the plane cuts. The only way, the only thing that makes a difference in the way the plane cuts is the bedding angle. And then obviously if there is on this one, there's a back bevel along the edge. So that does help cutting down. It brings the effective angle, if I had to guess, up above 50 degrees. Uh, you know, when it's bedded in the plane like this. Make sure you've seen it. Yeah, when it's bed in the plane like this, it's at 45, but because of that back bevel on the iron, it brings the effective angle up above 50 degrees, and that is why this wood right here is not tearing out, um, tearing out real bad when I'm planing into the grain. You know, even with that uh, relief on the cap iron, it's not so large. It's sticking out, and it's Right on the side. Now it's pretty square. Let's see, what, see if you can see what I'm looking at when I do this, because I don't want to just rip through it like uh, like I'm walking through a party. But I'm looking at the side to side on the iron right now. It's just a hair proud on this side. Looks pretty even right now. There's a lot of iron sticking out right now. You can see that there's quite a bit of iron sticking out to attract it. Sit on the strike plate in the back. I always tap the wedge every time I adjust it. Right now, just that little tap, there's nothing sticking out. There is zero. I don't think it would cut right now. Nope. So we went from a ton, a ton sticking out to nothing. So the plane functions beautifully. You know, you can really set it... Um, Super, super fine if you want to. So that is um, a coffin smoother. And like I said, I've done some real serious smoothing on very, very difficult, huge, large 10,000 pound knee braces out of the USS Constitution with that plane. Once upon a time where I needed the edge durability working on live oak and multiple grain directions. And they're set with a super secret epoxy by the Navy. And um, that... The edge retention on that was excellent compared to anything else, even 01, 
uh, I mean, uh, A1 and um, some of the other high-speed steel irons and, and some of my other smoothers, nothing would last with this smoothing. And I was able to, because the pieces were so big, you know, I need ladders to climb up on them. Um, you know, I was working up from above my head to below my knees down an angle and that's, you know, uh, 16 inches, 18 inches wide and being able to draw the plane towards me, it, you know, it just functioned great and kept an edge for a long time. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Some shavings to go on the wood stove and, um, those two pieces are ready to go to cut my joinery on them. Um, it'll all be cut by hand. Um, really nothing too complicated. Just get my uh, Foley bell saw sharpener in. I've been doing everything by hand forever, and now I get the Foley, so we'll do that. Been doing some lathe work, too. Converted the old uh, Craftsman 113, which is fully functional. Um, everything works on this. Repaired everything, and compared it, I mean, I actually converted, I uh, made a, tool rest with multiple different size rests um, and converted it over to where I can turn wood on it too. So we've been doing some turning. Um, see, I made some blanks up. Those can fit in, um, those have tenons on them to fit in a chuck to um, make ornaments and things like that. Something like, you know, like this out of spalted these are spalted maple. I, oh, no, this is birch. It's a birch ornament my wife made the other night. Some things maybe more complicated than that, too. But, um, yeah, that's what's going on. So, um, Coffin Smoother, 1880-ish. Probably made by prisoners in New York, along with the uh, Auburn Tools, Auburn Tools, uh, Ohio... New York Tool Company, oh, that's in Auburn. Auburn, Auburn, Ohio. I think this one's a New York Tool. And the New York Tool, they're all made by the same prisoners in New York by, for all these companies back in the 1800s. Um, but yeah, they work. I didn't even go light on it. Show you that, you know, you can pull it. You know, let's do that real quick. Since I'm having so much fun. Let's do... Just tighten the vise on the other end, and uh, I will. I'm gonna just barely get this thing cut and then do a couple smoothing passes. So these are perfectly even, even on the bottom, perfectly square. Let's get this thing to where I can do a smoothing pass. Just way retracted. Yeah, really backed up. Oh, there you go. I just picked up something there. Really backed itself out there. Just starting to pick up a sheet, pick up a little bit. Now this is it's a little bit proud on that side. This is super, super fine right now and we're talking about stuff that would stick to my that just um, would stick to my skin if I let it 
and it's only picking up the absolute high points right now because it's set so fine. I can go just a tad deeper. This essentially is not changing the dimension of the wood at all. These are super, super, super thin. And the great thing about this is you won't wipe the iron out, so you can go to town on the smoothing. Really just Pretty small with that tight mouth. I mean, the tight cap iron, they get a little wrinkly like they are right now. And obviously, it's not the same as planing with a Bailey pattern. Um, you know, they can get clogged and things like that too. But if you look at this, is a result of the cap iron being set so tight here because of the camber you know I'm not pulling full shavings yet unless but you see how wrinkly they are that's that result of um, setting that cap iron so tight but it will guarantee when it's this tight that you won't get any tear out you see that versus this is just the difference in the cap iron Uh, and these are these are pretty pretty thin. I wish I could set them up so you could see, but um, where do you see? Let me read through them, but I don't know if I can see if I can get a good shaving to read through it. Because I went at this with no regard for being exactly perfect um, it's like a, and it's set so fine right now it's just picking up the center of the iron and it's only picking up the high spots I should have the light better here the light stinks so you can see that you can read the um, calipers right through the shaving that's how thin the shaving is you can read the read the calipers right through the shaving no problem that's a super 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 thin shaving and you can see that it's still a little wrinkly it's wrinkly here it's because of the that's because of the cap iron being set so tight but this would never tear out at this this level and you could just go to town you can Plane away and not have to worry about it. So, I think it's probably getting a little long. Yeah, almost 40 minutes. All right. Well, hope you guys, uh, hope everybody has a great Christmas and Merry Christmas from the workshop to you. Um, hope we all have a great new year. Thanks for coming along.